Welcome to Calculus. Today, our lesson is about improper integrals. So the first thing that we'll talk about is exactly what improper integrals are. So improper integrals are definite integrals where the upper and or lower limit, so either one or both of them, is or are plus or minus infinity and also where undefined at a specific value in the interval. It could be either endpoint or any value in between those endpoints. So we'll get into kind of specifically what this looks like in our problems. If the limit exists, the improper integral converges. You may have heard this word before. And there is a solution. So we're going to be doing a limit to solve our improper integral problems. And if that limit exists, then we're saying that the integral does converge and you can find a solution for that definite integral. However, if the limit does not exist, the improper integral Do you know what the opposite of converges is? It's diverges. And there is no solution. So you will see some problems in these where the answer is going to be no solution. All right, let's start with our first example. Jump right in and see how this works. We're going to calculate the integral from 0 to 4 of 1 over the square root of x dx. Now, what makes this an improper integral? Well, if you substitute 0 in for the x in this function, guess what? You've got the square root of 0, which is 0, and 1 divided by 0 is undefined. So this falls into the case where it says it's undefined at a specific value in that interval from a to b. The function is undefined at 0. So that means we're going to do this as an improper integral problem. So when we have a situation like this, we're going to work a limit problem. And we're going to say the limit as b, we're creating a new variable b. And we're going to make it approach the value that is our problem value. Here in this problem, it's 0 that causes it to be undefined. So we're going to make zero, b approach 0. And Sometimes it's important to consider whether it's a left-hand limit or a right-hand limit. So, for example, since we're just worried about the interval from 0 to 4 on a number line, we would be looking as b approaches 0 from the right side because only values to the right of 0 are included in our interval. We're not using any negative numbers. We're not going to the left side at all. So... It's going to be the limit as b approaches 0 from the right of the integral from b, so we're putting the b where the 0 was, to 4. And let's rewrite this function so we can use the power rule as x to the negative 1 half power dx. So um, let's do that antiderivative. We're going to say the limit as b approaches 0 from the right of, if I add 1 to my power here, I'm going to have x to the 1 half multiply by the reciprocal of my new power. That's going to be 2. 
And this is evaluated from B to four. So I'm gonna go, what's the limit as B approaches zero from the right of, sub in the upper limit, so it's gonna be two, let's change that one half power to a square root of four, minus, plug in the lower limit, two square root of B, okay? Well, uh, square root of four is two, and two times two is four, so I could say this is the same thing as the limit as B approaches zero from the right of four minus two square roots of B. So at this point, I've simplified this as much as I can, so I'm gonna go ahead and see if I could do a direct substitution to evaluate this limit. If I put a zero in for B, square root of zero is zero times two is zero, four minus zero, is going to equal four. So the answer is four. Oops, let me get that where you can see that better. There we go. All right, let's try another one. Number two. We're gonna do the integral from negative infinity to one of e to the x dx. All right, obviously the negative infinity is the problem number here. So we're going to work a limit as B approaches that number, negative infinity. And um, so it'll be now the integral from the B is going to replace the negative infinity, and we're going to go to 1 of e to the x dx. So we're going to do the limit as b approaches negative infinity. And if I take the integral of e to the x, that's just e to the x, of course, and we'll evaluate this from b to one. So this is going to be the limit as b approaches negative infinity of e to the plug in the upper limit, one minus e to the plug in the lower limit, b. And so e to the one, of course, is just e. Um, so we could go ahead and look at what happens kind of if I do a direct substitution. If I do e to the power of negative infinity, what is that going to approach? Let's see, e minus e to the negative infinity Think about your e to the x graph. e to the x um, is your exponential growth function. Looks like this. So as you're going to negative infinity, as x goes to negative infinity, what is y going towards? It's going towards that horizontal asymptote of the x-axis, which is zero. The y value there is zero. y equals zero is the equation of the x-axis. So it's e minus zero, which is just, of course, equal to e. Okay? Now, problem three. We're going to do the integral from one to infinity of one over x squared dx. So the upper limit here is the problem value. So we're gonna say the limit as b approaches infinity of the integral from one to b, taking out the infinity and replacing it with the b. And then let's rewrite that as x to the negative two so that we can use the power rule backwards. So this is going to be the limit as b approaches infinity. And we're gonna add one to my power, so it's negative one, multiplied by the reciprocal of that new power, which is negative one and evaluate it from one to b. So this is going to be the limit as b approaches infinity of, well, oops, that's an ugly infinity. How about negative one over one, I mean over x, because the x to the negative one power would kick it down to the denominator and then it'd be a positive one, evaluated from one to b. 
so we're going to sub in the upper limit and subtract what we get when we sub in the lower limit. Negative 1 over b minus negative 1 over 1. So this is the limit as b approaches infinity of negative 1 over b, then that would just be plus 1. Now, if I send b to infinity, that denominator is going huge, and the numerator pales in comparison. The overall value of that fraction is approaching 0. Anytime you have a constant over infinity, that's going to 0. So this is just going to equal 0 plus 1, which is 1. That's the answer. All right, let's move on to the next one. Uh, number four. <laughs> We're going to do the integral from negative infinity to positive infinity of 1 over x squared plus 1 dx. All right, this time we have an issue because both of these are problem values that are causing us to have an improper integral. And you can't let b be two separate numbers at the same time. So when this happens, you're going to have to split this integral up into two smaller integrals. So you're going to say, let's do the limit. I mean, let's not make it a limit yet. Let's just divide the integral. Let's say the first integral is going to go from negative infinity to 0 of 1 over x squared plus 1 dx. And we'll add that to the integral from 0 to positive infinity of 1 over x squared plus 1 dx. So we learned we could do this when we learned properties of integrals uh, when we first learned about definite integrals. Um, it's been a little while ago now. So now I'm going to work this as two separate limit problems. I'm going to do the limit as b approaches negative infinity of the integral from b to 0 of 1 over x squared plus 1 dx. And I'm going to add that to another limit problem as b approaches positive infinity of the integral from 0 to b of 1 over x squared plus 1 dx. Now, hopefully, this integral is sticking out to you. Hopefully, you've been studying your note cards because this is the back of one of your note cards. Um, the antiderivative of 1, plus, 1 over x squared plus 1 is the inverse tangent. Do you remember the derivative of the inverse tangent of x is 1 over x squared plus 1? Okay, so we're going to say this is the limit as b approaches negative infinity of the inverse tangent, and let's plug in that upper number 0, minus the inverse tangent of b. And we'll add this to the limit as b approaches infinity of the inverse tangent of the upper limit b minus the inverse tangent of the lower limit 0. Okay, so the inverse tangent of 0, okay, that's saying at what angle on the unit circle is the tangent equal to 0? The answer to an inverse tangent is the angle. Well, that's at 0. You need to think about your unit circle for that. And then what about the inverse tangent of negative infinity, okay? Hopefully you know your inverse tangent graph. It has a horizontal asymptote. Actually, it's two horizontal asymptotes. Let me pull out my calculator and show you in case you forgot, which I'm sure you didn't, right? Inverse tangent of x graph. Okay, does this look familiar to you? 
there's a lower horizontal asymptote and there's an upper horizontal asymptote. And do you remember what those values are? Uh, the lower one is at negative pi over 2, and the upper one is at positive pi over 2. So as my uh, inverse tangent is going to negative infinity, that's on this side, that's going to the lower horizontal asymptote, which is negative pi over 2. So minus negative pi over 2. And then on this one, as B is approaching the upper horizontal asymptote as it goes to infinity, it's going towards pi over 2 minus 0. Still, the inverse tangent of 0 is 0. You can see that right here. It goes through the origin. Okay, so I've got 0 minus pi over 2, which is positive pi over 2 plus pi over 2 minus 0, so that's another pi over 2. And pi over 2 plus pi over 2 is 2 pi over 2, which is just pi. And that's the answer. Isn't this cool? We got one answer of e, and we got another answer of pi. Those are some pretty neat um, problems. Let me show you, too, um, while we're at the calculator here. If I were to graph... 1 divided by parentheses, x squared plus 1, close parentheses. That's this function that I'm doing the antiderivative of and graph it. Mm, that's kind of tiny. Let me see. Zoom in. So it has this horizontal asymptote at the x-axis. And what this is saying is if I add up all the area under the curve from negative infinity to positive infinity, Underneath this little mountain shape here, uh, all of that area adds up to equal pi. Isn't that cool? I think it's pretty fun stuff for learning and doing. All right, number four. Our next, no, that was number four. Just kidding. Number five. Uh, we're going to do the integral from 0 to 2 of x minus 1 to the negative 1 third power dx. So what is the problem with this value, uh, with this one? Like, uh, if I put a 0 in, I'm going to have negative 1 to something power. If I put 2 in, I'm going to have 1 to something power. It doesn't seem like there's any issue here. Well, if you're one of those people who likes to challenge yourself, maybe you could pause the video and see if you can figure out what the problem value is. Hopefully you've done that if you needed that challenge. Now, um, I will tell you that the problem value here is 1, which is in between these values. Because 1 minus 1 is 0, and this is to the negative 1 third power, which is going to kick it down to the denominator. And if I kick a 0 down to the denominator, and then raise it to the one-third power, I'm ending up with an undefined value. So this is another one of those where I'm going to have to split it into two integrals. Um, I'm going to go the integral from 0 to 1 of x minus 1 to the negative one-third dx plus the integral from 1 to 2 of x minus 1 to the negative one-third dx. And so we're going to go the limit as B approaches 1 from the left, um, because this first integral is just values from 0 to 1, so I'm coming at 1 from values that are smaller, of um, the integral from 0 to B of x minus 1 to the negative 1 third dx, so I'm replacing that 1 with the B. And then I'm going to do another limit problem where I'm going to let the B approach 1, but this time coming at it from the right side. And this integral will be from B to 2 of x minus 1 to the negative 1 third dx. So 
we are going to take the antiderivatives. It's kind of like a u substitution because it's like the inside function is x minus 1 and u is equal to x minus 1, but the derivative of that u is just 1. So you don't really have to multiply by anything to adjust it. So we're just going to say the limit as b approaches 1 from the left of we're going to say x minus 1. If we add 1 to the power there, that's going to give us 2 thirds. And then we multiply by the reciprocal of that new power, which is 3 halves. And this is evaluated from 0 to b. And we'll add this to the limit as b approaches 1 from the right of, same thing, right? 3 halves x minus 1 raised to the 2 thirds power but this time evaluated from b to 2. So we're going to sub in the upper limit, subtract what we get when we sub in the lower limit. So 3 halves of b minus 1 to the 2 thirds minus 3 halves of um, 0 minus 1 to the 2 thirds plus the limit as b approaches 1 from the right of 3 halves of 2 minus 1 to the 2 thirds power minus 3 halves of b minus 1 to the 2 thirds power. Okay. So now we are ready to figure out these limits. Let's think of this like direct substitution. Okay. So guess what? If I sub in a 1 for this b, 1 minus 1 is 0. 0 to the anything power is 0 times 3 halves is still 0. So all this first part is going to equal 0 minus negative 1 to the 2 thirds power is going to be positive 1 because the upper number is squaring it. So it's like negative 1 times negative 1 and then take the cube root of 1, which is 1. So this is just going to give you 3 halves. Plus 2 minus 1 is 1. 1 to the 2 thirds power is still 1 times 3 halves, it's 3 halves. Then we sub in the 1 here, 1 minus 1 is 0. 0 to the 2 thirds power is 0 times 3 halves is 0. Pardon me, so we've got negative 3 halves plus 3 halves, and that total is 0. All right. Number six. We've got the integral from zero to four of eight over x dx. So what's the problem? The problem number is the zero because this function is undefined at zero. So let's say this is equal to the limit as b approaches 0 from the right side. And I'm going to go ahead and pull the 8 out in front of the integral symbol. So my lower limit, take out the 0, replace it with a b. The upper limit is 4. And then I have 1 over x dx. Now this is the one where you don't use the power rule. The integral of 1 over x is natural log of x. So we're going to say this is the limit as b approaches 0 from the right of 8 times the natural log of the absolute value of x evaluated from b to 4. So we're going to do the limit as b approaches 0 from the right of 8 times the natural log of the absolute value of 4, plugging in the upper limit, minus 8 times the natural log of the absolute value of b. Okay, so um, 
if we were to try to think of this as a direct substitution, you really can't do a direct substitution on this one because uh, the natural log is not defined at zero. There's a vertical asymptote on your natural log function um, when x is zero. Uh, keep in mind what the natural log function looks like. It goes down and up like that. So if we're saying that b is approaching zero from the right side, then this is going to negative infinity. So this is a constant. You could put this in your calculator and get an ugly number. But if you take a constant minus negative infinity, this is going to negative infinity, then that's like constant plus infinity. So this is approaching positive infinity. The limit of this function here is positive infinity. Okay, but remember what we talked about at the beginning. If the limit does not exist, the improper integral diverges and there is no solution. So this one, remember infinity is not really an answer to a limit problem. It describes a diverging limit. So this one diverges. So that's like the answer. Basically it means no solution, but you will see an answer to an improper integral described as it is a diverging improper integral. So if you were to like look it up in the back of the book, that's what you're going to see for your answer. It's diverging. Okay. All right. Next one, number seven. We have the integral from zero to infinity of the cosine of pi x dx. So the upper limit is infinity. That's our problem one. So we want to say Let's make the limit as b approaches infinity of the integral from 0 to b, taking out that infinity and putting the b in its place, of the cosine of pi x dx. So to integrate this, I'm going to have to do a u substitution. And you don't have to show your work for your u substitution if you don't want to, because you've been doing these a long time. u is pi x, the derivative of that u is pi. So I would have to have 1 over pi du is equal to dx. So I've got to multiply by 1 over pi in here. So I'm going to do the limit as b approaches infinity of, we'll rewrite this integral in terms of u, the integral from 0 to b of the cosine of u times 1 over pi du. And of course, that 1 over pi can come out in front of the integral symbol. So this would be, let's, let's just work down. The limit as b approaches infinity of 1 over pi integral 0 to b of cosine of u du. And what is the antiderivative of the cosine? That would be the sine. So we're going to do the limit as b approaches infinity of 1 over pi times the sine of... I'm going to go ahead and take out the u, replace it back with the pi x. I don't want to change the limits on this definite integral problem, so I'm going to go back to x. And this is evaluated from 0 to b. And now I'm going to sub in the upper limit and subtract what I get when I sub in the lower limit. So the limit as b approaches infinity, 1 over pi sine of pi b minus 1 over pi sine of pi times 0. All right, so... 0 times pi is 0, and the sine of 0 is 0. And 1 over pi times 0 is 0. So this second term is 0. But this, I'm sending b to infinity. 
So the sine of pi times infinity, well, the sine is an oscillating function. It goes up and down between uh, negative one and one, and it doesn't zero in on one specific value. So that limit does not exist. Oops, I broke my pencil leg. If the limit does not exist, then that means that the improper integral diverges. Okay, so it does not have a sum. All right, number eight. Let's do the integral from four to infinity of one over x times the natural log of x cubed dx. Um, I would recommend that you stop and pause your video and try this one on your own and then play it to see if you got it right. All right, I'm gonna assume that you have followed my directions paused your video and done this one on your own. So let's see how you did. The limit as b approaches infinity of the integral from four to b of one over x times the natural log of x cubed dx. So to evaluate this integral, you're going to have to do a u substitution where you make u be the natural log of x. And of course the derivative would be one over x And guess what? We do have a one over x in the problem already. So we'll take the one over x out and replace it with just the du. So we're gonna do the limit as b approaches infinity of the integral of four to b of, I'm rewriting my integral with u, one over u cubed du because the one over x dx comes out and is replaced with the du. And of course, to use the power rule backwards, I probably want to think of that as u to the negative third power. And so now when I add one to my power to do the power rule backwards, I'm going to have u to the negative two and I'll multiply by the reciprocal of that new power, negative one half, and this will be evaluated from four to b. And I do not wanna change these limits, so I want to go ahead and take my natural log of x and put it back in there. So let's think of this as the limit as b approaches infinity of negative one over two, times the natural log of x squared evaluated from four to b. So I'm going to substitute in my upper limit and subtract what I get when I substitute in my lower limit of integration. So the limit as b approaches infinity of negative one over two times the natural log of b quantity squared minus negative one over two times the natural log of four quantity squared. Okay, so let's send B to infinity. So if B is going to infinity, we're talking about the right hand end behavior of your natural log function. Keep in mind your natural log function, parent function looks like this. So as x goes to infinity, y goes to infinity as well. And infinity squared is infinity, and infinity times two is infinity, so this is negative one over infinity. Any constant over infinity is going to zero. And then we're gonna have minus negative, so this is plus one over two times the natural log of four quantity squared. Natural log of four is not some pretty number. And, uh, but it is, this is a constant. So zero plus a constant is just that constant. So the answer is one over two times the natural log of four quantity squared. That's the answer to the problem. All right, we're rocking and rolling. We only have one left to do, amazing. 
So the last one, number nine, is the integral from negative infinity to zero of x e to the negative 2x dx. My lower limit is the negative infinity, so I'm going to go limit as b approaches negative infinity of the integral from b to zero of x e to the negative 2x dx. Now, how do we do the antiderivative of this? Integration by parts. Woohoo! We get to review something. So our u, okay, we have a we have an algebraic and an exponential. You remember your LIATE acronym? The U is going to be your algebraic, and the, v, the DV is going to be your exponential because the A is to the left of the E in LIATE. So U is equal to X, DV is equal to E to the negative 2X DX. The derivative of U, DU is one, dx, and v is equal to the integral of dv, so that's going to be the integral of e to the negative 2x dx. You have to do the u sub. You don't have to show the work for the u sub, but I will. Negative 1 half du equals dx. So this is the integral of e to the u, negative one-half du. Of course, you can pull that negative one-half out in front. And then when you integrate e to the u, it's just e to the u, but we'll go ahead and replace it back with the negative 2x power. And we don't put a plus c on here. So, doo -doo 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 -doo. I'm going to... Write the formula for integration by parts. The integral of u dv equals uv minus the integral of v du. And so u is x, v is negative 1 half e to the negative 2x power minus the integral of v um, Oops. negative 1 half e to the negative 2x dx. Okay, so this negative 1 half can come out in front of the integral symbol. And right here, I'm going to rearrange these so that it's more of your standard order. 1 half, negative 1 half in front, then the x, then the e to the negative 2x. If I pull that negative 1 half out in front, it's going to be positive one-half times the integral of e to the negative 2x dx. Now notice, we just integrated e to the negative 2x dx right here. So I can replace that with negative one-half e to the negative 2x. Negative one-half e to the negative 2x. And I'll put a plus c. And we'll multiply those coefficients minus one fourth e to the negative two x plus c. Okay, so <clears throat> this integration by parts work that I just did was to help me with this. Uh, improper integral. So I'm working the limit as b approaches negative infinity, remember? And then this integral is what we just did, but we need to evaluate it from b to zero. So I'm going to take my answer that I just got. Whoops, broke the pencil right again. negative one half x e to the negative two x minus one fourth e to the negative two x. Oh, I didn't really need my plus c, did I? Because this is a definite integral, silly me. Evaluated from b to zero. 
Okay. So now I'm going to sub in my upper limit zero and subtract what I get when I sub in my lower limit B. So the limit as B approaches negative infinity of negative one half times zero e to the negative two times zero minus one fourth e to the negative two times zero. And that is minus negative one half B e to the negative two B minus one fourth e to the negative two B. And all this is in brackets because I'm taking the limit as B approaches negative infinity of the whole thing. So the limit as B approaches negative infinity, I have zero here. And then e to the zero power is one. So this is just gonna be minus one fourth. Minus, okay, we're making, well, actually, Let's distribute this negative and say plus one half b e to the negative two b plus one fourth e to the negative two b. And now we need to send b to negative infinity in each of these three cases and figure out what that does. <clears throat> so I've got negative one fourth is the limit here. Now, if this is negative infinity times negative two, that's positive infinity. E to the positive infinity times negative infinity times a half. E to the positive infinity is Uh, positive, wait, hang on. A negative, this goes like this. This is e to the negative 2x. And if I'm looking at the left hand, yeah, that's going to infinity times negative infinity. So I've got negative infinity plus e to the positive infinity. This is positive infinity. Now, since this was infinity times infinity, this is the greater infinity, really. So this is going to negative infinity. But regardless, you can tell this is diverging. This is not zeroing in on a specific number. So the answer is diverging. All right. Good luck with your in proper integral problems. Please let me know if you have any questions, if you need help in any way, and I hope you have a fabulous day. Bye for now.